The Jubilee Line is just under 23 miles long. For much of its length, it runs alongside the tracks of the Metropolitan Line. At Baker Street, it continues through the west end of London to Green Park, from where the Jubilee Line extension takes the line forward via Waterloo and London Bridge. Stand, clear the doors now. Mind the doors. Our Jubilee Line train is of 1996 stock, similar to those on the Northern Line. Chilton line diverges towards Marylebone as we pass the classic underground electrical substation. This station is finished the road, change here for the Metropolitan line. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. Finchley Road is the last cross-platform interchange between the Met and Jubilee lines. We now go underground for the next 12 miles, all the way to Canning Town in East London. Now enter the cast iron tube tunnels built for the Bakerloo line. The Metropolitan also goes underground, but closer to the surface. So we diverge onto the brand new Jubilee Line extension. The original intention was for the Fleet Line to be extended via Aldwych and Fenchurch Street out to Woolwich and Thames Mead, but it was ultimately defeated by lack of funds. And the It's been a huge and complicated engineering triumph, driving a new underground through the heart of an ageing city like London, as well as having to cope with tunnelling through the kind of very difficult geology south of the river, which had always defeated the best efforts of engineers in the past. Engineering-wise, Jubilee Line is a quite extraordinary project, extraordinarily difficult, but with extraordinarily pleasing results. Perhaps just a little understated. When building was at its peak, the JLE was Europe's largest civil engineering project. At its height, over 30,000 people worked on the extension. Building a railway as complex as this hasn't been easy. As well as the new tunnels, signalling, new track and so on, 11 new stations have either been built from scratch